Welcome to my talk, Don't Make Me Impersonate My Identity. My name's Cynthia Thomas. I'm part of the Google GKE security team. The fun of lightning talks, let's just dive in. A little fundamentals. Kubernetes, pods, and their identities. How are they getting them? Well, in Kubernetes, pods are given a distinct identity within the cluster. How are these assigned? Basically, through service accounts. That's useful for these non-human uh, workloads, right? Like pods and, and VMs. Uh, and in Kubernetes, pods are always assigned a service account, whether it be the default service account or something that you configure and assign to the pod. So this specific talk, we're gonna dive in specifically to this use case where pods are trying to talk to some cloud resource. And it's applicable to other types of services um, and applications as well, which we'll, we'll get into. So what are the options to uh, get pods to talk to cloud resources? Well, you could export the credentials and mount them as a Kubernetes secret in the pod at runtime. Uh, that's somewhat risky because you have to maintain those credentials and operate them, more burdensome on the application, and they're long-lived. So a bit risky and not as, as recommended. You could use the credential of the worker node or the underlying VM identity. Uh, but from these Microsoft service architectures that we're dealing with, pods have different accesses, and we don't want to give them all the same um, identity credentials, and even with just yeah, microservices and multi-tenant clusters. Uh, so the, the last way that we'll mention is Workload Identity Federation. This is actually our uh, recommended way to uh, give pods identities when they're reaching out to cloud APIs uh, services, and it's easier to manage and uh, less risky. So let's see Workload Identity Federation at work. Um, basically, this allows the, the federated uh, identities to uh, reach these uh, cloud API services, and that, that's happening with, at the pod level with the federated identities. At the heart of it is the OpenID Connect protocol. Uh, so that's enabling uh, the federated identities to reach back to uh, the uh, OpenID provider or the identity provider. And in this case, in the Kubernetes world, that's uh, what the cluster service is providing. So the cluster actually acts as an OpenID provider or identity provider. In this case, the cloud service or the API service on the right-hand side is acting as the relying party. And so that's outsourcing the user verification to uh, an identity provider. And that's all through OpenID Connect. So uh, it's allowing for an, uh, standardized JWT tokens and, and that's what's happened, letting this exchange happen. So first, that trust is being established between uh, the identity provider and then that relying party. From there, uh, the communication is established so the pod can reach to the Cloud API service uh, and leverage that provided token. And by the way, this uh, Cloud API service, as long as it supports this OpenID Connect type of support, uh, this could be any service or application with that type of support, uh, and then that token can be provided. It doesn't have to be just a Cloud API service. And the, there's a good blog here I'm linked out to if, with the slides that are provided. Uh, you can get more details on that OIDC support for uh, service tokens. So now that we've established how to that uh, user verification, how do we actually make sure that pods have specific access to uh, the cloud APIs? We want to ensure what types of permissions. Um, well, it's important to define, at least on Google Cloud, you can do this through role bindings and to define those permissions. Uh, and actually, it was actually kind of complicated up until recently. And that's where we want to say, just say no to impersonation. Uh, now on Google Cloud, these role bindings actually understand the Kubernetes constructs. So you can define the Kubernetes service account right into those uh, IAM policies. And it actually eliminates the impersonation steps here. So it actually reduces the configurations less room for confusion, which our customers faced earlier. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's a great thing uh, on the simplification side. Finally, just to sum it up, this is a lightning talk. For more details, we'll be hanging out here. There's a bunch of my colleagues, Tahir is here as well, in the crowd. Uh, we would love to keep chatting. Uh, but we want to make sure you know about uh, leveraging Workload Identity Federation. It's a more secure and uh, easier to manage way. So don't worry about managing those secrets. Um, you, you, and 
don't have to, you don't have to any longer worry about identity and person nation in these IAM policies and leverage the federated identities uh, that are supporting OIDC uh, tokens, SAML, uh, and now X509 certificates with Spiffy. So thanks for your time and have a great conference.